Hello everyone and um, a very warm welcome to yet another series of EQs and uh, this is a series that we launch every Wednesday and we discuss a question on it and uh, today on this EQ series we're going to discuss an Obzinangaini question and I'm Dr. Deepthi uh, and I'll be discussing this question for you and the question that we have taken today is going to be on the new pattern AIMS MCQ right so we're going to talk about the multiple completion type question today and uh, this is one of the new patterns which the AIMS has launched in the May session right so let's look at the question uh, the question says which of the following can cause hydrops fetalis and the options go like you mark option A if 1, 2, 3 are correct, uh, B if 1 and 3 are correct, C if 2 and 4 are correct and D if all are correct. Right. So when we talk about hydrops fetalis in this question, option A is true, antibodies to RH group, right, as well as antibodies to the Kell antigen. So these are immune mediated causes of hydrops fetalis. Right, so hydrops fetalis can be non-immune as well as immune mediated and definitely yes, the immune mediated is more common than the non-immune mediated. Right, so uh, option A as well as option D are antigens on the red blood cells and yes, uh, to both of these uh, the immune response can develop and it can cause uh, HDFN, hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn. And among uh, these um, immunological causes, the most common cause of HDFN is RH isoimmunization, right? So among the immune mediated, I'm saying that the most common is RH isoimmunization. So uh, along with the RH group, uh, uh, the Kell antigen can also cause the hemolytic disease as well as Duff Duffy antigen as well as ABO blood groups, right? So all these can cause uh, immune mediated hemolytic disease of fetus and newborn or hydrops fetalis, right? And among these, I'm saying that the most common is RH isoimmunization. Let's look at option B and C, right? So once we know that A and D are correct, right? Uh, I, I'm sure you can, you'll be able to guess the answer from the options, but let us first approach the options. So parvovirus infection can cause hydrops fetalis. This is absolutely true. So it is one of the causes of non-immune mediated hydrops fetalis. And, um, uh, you know, infections can definitely cause non-immune mediated hydrops fetalis. And among the infections, you know, the parvovirus right b19 is the most common cause right so among the infectious causes parvovirus b19 is the most common cause of non-immune mediated hydrops fetalis homozygous alpha thalassemia is again true right so yes anemia in the baby can cause hydrops fetalis and among the hematological causes right of non-immune hydrops so this is most common so i'm saying this is most common among the hematological causes now which means we already get the answer for this mcq so all four statements are correct so answer will be d if all are correct right and two more very high yielding questions from this is i've already talked about the most common cause of immune mediated hydrops fetalis and that is uh, rh isoimmunization we could also ask you what is the most common cause of non-immune mediated hydrops fetalis so here you have to understand that when you talk about non-immune mediated hydrops fetalis the most common cause world over right so world over it is cardiovascular abnormalities Okay, so world over it is cardiovascular abnormalities and there could be many types of cardiovascular abnormalities leading to non-immune hydrops fetalis. But among this, so among this group, the most common is atrioventricular septal defects, right? So among this group, it is atrioventricular septal defects. Now, another modification, the next leading cause. So after cardiovascular the next leading cause is hematological right so which we i was just talking about or fetal anemia so anemia in the baby is the next leading cause so 40 percent of cases of non-immune hydrops fetalis are because of cardiovascular causes whereas 10 to 20 percent are because of hematological causes right now this is true uh, world over but if we typically ask in india or in fact 
Southeast Asia. So among Southeast Asians, alpha thalassemia is the leading cause of non-immune hydrospedalis, right? So among Southeast Asians and even in India, the most common cause of non-immune hydrospedalis is alpha thalassemia, whereas world over it is cardiovascular abnormalities. Right. And uh, so these are all very, very important questions asked in some form or the other. So actually, this one question has a lot of MCQs hidden in it. And I hope you will do them right. And also, I would like to add that please understand hydropspitalis is a radiological diagnosis. So what is this? This is basically a fluid collection, right? It's a fluid collection in the subcutaneous or soft tissues and these serous cavities of the baby, right? So it's a radiological diagnosis. And we say, if more than or equal to two of these are present, right? then we will say that the baby has high drops. So these could be a pleural effusion. Okay. It could be a pericardial effusion. Right. Then it could be ascites and subcutaneous edema. Right. So these are all cavities. And if we have fluid collection in two or more of these cavities, then yes, it is going to be diagnosed as hydropspitalis. Please understand that babies who have hydrops may even show polyhydramnios on ultrasound and they may even show placentomegaly on ultrasound. Right. So they can show uh, polyhydramnios and placentomegaly. But what you have to know is that these are not the diagnostic criteria for uh, high drops. These are only findings in a baby who has or in a pregnancy complicated by high drops fetalis. So these are findings and they are not diagnostic criteria, right? So diagnostic criteria are what I have written above. If there is fluid collection in two or more of these cavities, which is pleural effusion, pericardial effusion, ascites and subcutaneous edema right so these are some very high yielding points about uh, hydropspitalis which could be immune or non-immune and i hope you now will not make a confusion on these and i hope you get the mcqs that you get on this uh, correct in your entrance exams right so if you liked our video please follow us on the ramsteli youtube channel as well as on the emedicos app and um, this is the eq series hope you stay connected and best wishes from dr deepthi thank you so much